Praise God and welcome again, everybody, for the uh, course, Old Testament Books of History, Part 1. Those are the books of uh, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings. Several people cannot be on with us tonight. Cheryl Hawkins, uh, you'll be listening by way of the, the recording. A shout out to you and Andrew and your family and to others who cannot make it live with us tonight. Hey, Christy Carpenter, um, God bless you. Keep up the great work up in um, Kuna, Idaho, and to all the others. We bless, bless you and thank God for you. Okay, tonight we're going to look at um, some very interesting passages of Scripture and some very exciting things. Chapter 13 of Judges. Let's begin with uh, prayer. Father God, we thank you for your blessings, for your abundant grace and mercy. Thank you for this new day. Thank you that we can assemble together to study your word. We praise you, Father, for your blessings as we study your word. Give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding. And Lord, we pray for Karen's family, for the loss of her aunt Jeanette, that you bring healing to her family. And uh, we pray for Brian, pray for Brian's girlfriend and her father as they travel to the Philippines for a mission trip. <laughs> and then, Lord, we ask that you continue to guide and bless each one of us. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Judges 13, and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines forty years. You see this you, you see this cycle repeating itself during the time of the judges. <clears throat> the judges we're looking at about a period of four hundred years, uh, in which there was no king in Israel, no no leader. The judges rose up. God rose up a judge to deliver them. And and your cycle is. Um, a judge judging Israel and Israel obeying God during the time of the judge and many of the judges ruled for about 40 years or so and then after the judge died then Israel went back into apostasy or backsliding and then God allowed another nation to come up and conquer Israel the uh, Amalekites and uh, the Philistines and others, and and when Israel repented, God raised up another judge to deliver them. The judge was also known as the deliverer. But you see this recurring cycle in the book of Judges, and this this um, passage. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. That's a theme throughout. The book of Judges. So, okay, so verse 2 of chapter 13. <clears throat> there was a certain man of Zorah of the family of the Danites whose name was Manoah. And his wife was barren and bare not. Okay, uh, some pronounce Manoah, Manoah, Manaka. Uh, but he was from the tribe of Dan. And this uh, man... Uh, happens to be, turns out to be the father of uh, Samson. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. And so um, Manoah's wife was visited by an angel, and the angel of the Lord told her that uh, she would give birth to a Nazarite. A Nazarite, ladies and gentlemen, had certain restrictions on his life. And this woman was given restrictions uh, to follow during her pregnancy. And she believed the angel of the Lord and her husband Manoah believed the, the angel of the Lord. And so these are the commands 
uh, there are certain commands that he gave uh, to her. Now therefore beware, verse 4, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. If you have your... Uh, if you're w watching by way of computer, you can tell that I'm not a Nazarite. <laughs> you, <clears throat> you can tell that I'm not a Nazarite, ladies and gentlemen. My head gets shaved. I shave my head like every two or three days. I am not a Nazarite, okay? But this child was to be a Nazarite. And these are the commands that the angel gave to Manoah and his wife. Beware and drink no wine or strong drink. And number two, eat no unclean thing. Number three, no razor shall come upon your son's head. And do not eat anything but that comes of the vine. This would include grapes and raisins. She was not even to eat any grapes or raisins, and the child was not. And the angel specified this will be a male child. And they believed God. They believed the angel of the Lord. And then to Manoah, he said, all that I have commanded her, make sure she obeys those commands. Okay? Uh, all Nazarites, Nazarites were to let their hair grow and to abstain from all fruit of the vine. So uh, we find that the child Samson would grow up to be a Nazarite. He joined with other Nazarites, um, one being John the Baptist, who was a Nazarite. Okay, so there were a few more, but John, we know John the Baptist and Samson were Nazarites. Okay. Then the woman came and told her husband, verse 6, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. Very terrible. In other words, she was afraid of him. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told he me his name. She said, I was afraid of him, but I did not ask him if he was an angel, and he did not tell me his name. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and now drink no wine or strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for the child will be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Ladies and gentlemen, do not confuse a Nazarite with a Nazarene. A Nazarite was one like John the Baptist and like Samson who, who took these vows. A Nazarene was one born in Nazareth. Okay. Verse 9, and God hearkened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. Manoah, Manoah had said to the angel, hey, uh, uh, <clears throat> I was, he, he, he prayed unto God, I wasn't there uh, when you gave instructions to my wife, so can you make another appearance? And God did so. And the angel appeared to Manoah's wife again, verse 10, and the woman made haste and ran and showed her husband and said unto him, Behold, the man hath appeared unto me that came unto me the other day. And Manoah arose and went after his wife and came to the man and said unto him, Art thou the man that spakest unto the woman? And he said, I am. And Manoah said, Now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child, and how shall we do unto him? And the angel of the Lord said unto, unto Manoah, Of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All that I commanded her, let her observe. And so they uh, obeyed um, God, and, and then Manoah uh, desired to prepare a meal for the angel. 
he didn't know it was an angel. He, he thought it was a, 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 a natural man, a prophet. <clears throat> and um, verse 14, And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread. And if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. You see, angels serve God. And so Manoah wanted to offer a burnt offering uh, unto this man, uh, but the, the angel um, reprimanded him. No, it must be unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. And ladies and gentlemen, we are to worship God, not people. No matter how great people are in our lives, we are not to bow down to them and worship them or make idols or icons out of them. And, um, you know, we were saddened uh, this week to hear of the death of Kobe Bryant and his daughter and, and, and the deaths of, uh, of seven other people. And all over the world, people were kind of making icons out of Kobe. Kobe was a great uh, uh, basketball player and philanthropist. But the warning is, do not make gods or idols out of people. Now, probably you'll see, you, and it always happens after his funeral, they'll come up with some dirt on Kobe and, and, and find out uh, that uh, he wasn't as great as people thought he was. That's the way it is with, with people. We're not to worship people. The Bible says flee idolatry and, and flee these icons. Do not make icons out of people. Okay? And it'll be the same with you and me. Uh, Karen, when when we're called home to be to the Lord, Karen or or, or Brian or Jackie Carter or whoever, you know, uh, we can do great things here in this world. But you'll be, you can rest assured that somebody has some dirt to spread in your and spread about you uh, after you're gone. I know they will about me. Hey, look here. You don't have to wait until I die to get the dirt. If you want to know the dirt, give me a call. We'll talk about my dirt. But you know what? My <laughs> dirt, hallelujah, is covered by the blood of the Lamb of God. I'm going to tell you right now. I'll tell you my dirt, but it's covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So I don't care what kind of dirt they dig up on me. And uh, uh, um, I know that I know that I'm saved, hallelujah, washed in the blood of the Lamb, and you know that you know that you are, so it doesn't matter what they say about you. Praise God. I thank God for the blood of Jesus. Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. Uh, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and with his stripes, we are healed. That isn't that good. Isn't that good news? Somebody ought to say hallelujah. Somebody say ought to say amen. Praise God. I know that I can get an amen from Dr. Gene Bratton. Come on, Dr. Gene Bratton. Let's get an amen. amen. All right now. Amen. All right now. Praise God. Praise God. <clears throat> okay. And so, chapter fourteen. Samson. Um, this child grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times uh, in the camp of the tribe of Dan. Chapter 14, And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now Samson uh, had a problem, ladies and gentlemen. His problem was women. Samson had a problem with women. Now I'm not going to blame Samson. A lot of men have problems with women. Uh, um, I, I'd rather see a man have a problem with a woman than a problem with another man. Come on. Oh, watch out, preacher. Don't Amen. go there, preacher. Uh, watch out, preacher. <clears throat> but we're going to look later on in this, in, this, in this book of Judges. There is a group of Danites from, from Dan, uh, Samson's own people. Danites, they had problems with men. They practice sodomy. We're going to see that later on in this study of the book of Judges. But I'd rather see a man have a problem with women than have a problem with men. But even having a problem with women, you know, adultery, fornication, uh, 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 all this is a sin. And so, so uh, let, us, let, us, let, us, let us practice, practice 
obeying the Lord and be faithful to the Lord and teach our children, our grandsons and sons and grandsons and, 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 and posterity, even our daughters. Teach our daughters. Teach our daughters not to uh, 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 be a part of, a, of a, uh, a situation that's unpleasing to God. And so Samson saw this woman. She was a Philistine. Now God had warned the people about all uh, these marrying the women of the Canaanites. God had warned them, but many did not obey his warning. Uh, and um, we see Samson saw the Philistine, and he said, he came up, verse 2, and told his father and his mother and said, I've seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for, my, for me to wife. Get her for me to wife. In other words, I want to marry her. Get her for me to wife. Then his father and his mother said unto her, him, is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren or among all thy people that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. Samson, we know he was spoiled. He was spoiled. Uh, he, no, no, dad, go get her for me. That's the one I want. She pleaseth me. Okay, but his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord that he sought an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time, the Philistines had dominion over Israel. So it was God's plan that Samson uh, uh, fall in love with this Philistine woman and that his father make arrangements for the marriage. And so um, then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath. Verse 6, uh, oh, and behold, a lion, young lion roared against him. Verse 6, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. I mean, Samson just tore that lion apart, just like he was tearing a goat apart. But he told not his father or his mother what he had done. And he went down to talk with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. Verse 8, and after a time he returned to take her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion, and behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. <clears throat> so Samson killed the lion, then he saw this swarm of uh, bees and honey in the carcass of the, of the lion. Tonight we're going to look at chapter 13, the Philistine threat, Samson's birth. Chapter 14, Samson's riddle and plowing with a heifer. Yep, yep, that's what it says, plowing with a heifer. Chapter 15, uh, uh, Samson and the foxes and the slaughter of the Philistines. Chapter 16, Samson and Delilah. Samson in prison, the death of Samson. Chapter 17, a Levite for hire. Chapter 18, Micah's priest and a tribal priest. Chapter 19, the Levite and his concubine. And uh, he cut her into 12 pieces. Chapter 20, Israel against Benjamin. Israel defeated. Benjamin defeated. Chapter 21, wives, wives for the Benjamite. And then we're going to see again, every man did that which was right in his own sight. So we're going to fast forward a little bit. Um, <clears throat> many of us have studied over and over again this, the study of Samson and Delilah. Samson had a woman problem. Okay, uh, Samson was powerful. He was almighty. Uh, it turned out that the woman he wanted to marry among the Philistines, uh, he had planned the wedding feast and, and called all the men of the community there for, together for a feast. And then it turned out the, that the woman's father gave Samson's uh, betrothed to another man. And Samson was highly upset. And so he gathered up 300 foxes, tied their tails together two by two, and then set a torch, uh, on, tied a torch on their tails and sent them through the cornfields of all the Philistines burning up their crops. Okay, so they were angry at Samson. Samson wound up killing a whole lot of people. And then um, he even had to kill, uh, uh, he even killed some Philistines 
uh, some, some enemies just to please the guys in his wedding party. Okay, he, Samson gave this riddle to them and um, based on the, the bees and the honey in the carcass of the lamb, of the lion. <clears throat> and so um, at the wedding feast, Samson, and the wedding feast lasted seven days, Samson gave this riddle to the men and said, I will put, verse 12 of chapter 14, I will put now put forth a riddle unto you. If ye can certainly declare unto me, declare to me within the seven days of the feast and find it out, then I will give you 30 sheets and 30 change of garments. So he, he promised them he'd give them sheets and changes of clothing for 30 men. But if ye cannot declare it to me, then shall ye give me 30 sheets and 30 changes of garment. And they said unto him, Put forth thy riddle that we may hear it. And he said unto them, Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they could not in three days expound the riddle. They didn't have a clue. They had no clue what he was talking about. He said, <clears throat> Samson said, Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. They didn't have a clue. And it came to pass on the seventh day, that they said unto Samson's wife, Entice thy husband, that he may declare unto us the riddle, lest we burn thee and thy father's house with fire. Have ye called us to take that we have? And is it not so? So we have a case, ladies and gentlemen, a case of quid pro quo. Yes, yes, it's a case of quid pro quo. Either tell me, tell us what... Uh, 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 the, the secret is that your husband has, or else we're going to burn your father's house down. Dr. Jean Bratton, does that sound like quid pro quo to you? Yes, yes, indeed. Yeah, it was a threat. It was a threat. And so Samson's wife, because, hey, the threat was they're going to burn her and her father up. And so she cried before Samson. She boo-hooed and bawled and squalled, verse 17, and she wept before him for the seven days while their feast lasted. It was supposed to be a time of joy. And she's crying, boo-hooing, bawling, squalling. Well, she had a right to. They threatened to burn her father's house. These guys didn't play. I mean, Samson hung out with some ungodly folks. And, the, and uh, so she told the riddle. Samson wound up telling her the riddle, and she told the riddle to the children of her people. And the men of the city said unto him on the seventh day before the sun went down, What is sweeter than honey? The riddle was, uh, out of the eater came forth meat, and, and um, out of the strong came forth sweetness. And then they gave him the answer to the riddle, uh, What is sweeter than honey? And what is stronger than a lion? Verse 18, And he said unto them, if ye had not plowed with my heifer, and I use this as a theme for chapter 14, plowing with my heifer. If you had not plowed with my heifer, ye had not found out my riddle. In other words, if you had not been messing with my wife, you know, uh, you would not have found out the answer to the riddle. Verse 19, And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he went down to Ashkelon and slew 30 men of them, and took their spoil, and gave change of garments. So the Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson. Samson went out and killed uh, 30 men of the enemy, took their clothing and their sheets, and gave it to uh, uh, the men of uh, his wife's, his wife's um, community. Okay, but he did not get this, this woman. Um, but Samson's wife was given to his companion, verse 20, whom he had used as his friend. So Samson was deceived, and, uh, but that didn't stop him from uh, lusting. But it came to pass within a while after, at the time of wheat harvest, Samson visited his wife with a kid, meaning a goat, not a child. And he said, I will go into my wife unto the chamber, but her father would not suffer him to go in. So her father prevented Samson from um, um, 
consummating the marriage with his wife. And he said, no, I've given her uh, to, uh, to another man. And, um, but here, here I take, because uh, uh, I thought you hated her. And here, take my um, other daughter instead. And Sam had a case of the jaws. In other words, his jaws were tight. I mean, he was angry. He was furious. And then that's when he burned. He got the foxes and burned down the fields, the cornfields. And um, incidentally, later on, the uh, people of the town eventually did burn, burn up Samson's wife and his father. After Samson wiped a whole lot of them, wiped them out and wiped out their cornfields. So chapter 16, um, chapter 16, even in chapter 15, Samson brought water out of a jawbone of, of an animal. Samson, God used him to perform miracles. Um, J Samson took a jawbone of an ass, verse 15, and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men with the jawbone of an ass. With the same jawbone, he brought forth water when he was thirsty. He said, God, I've killed all these people. Now am I going to die of, of thirst? And God performed the miracle and brought forth water for Samson. So you see some uh, terrible things happening and a lot of killing and a lot of slaughter. But the spirit of the Lord was upon Samson because, remember, the Philistines had risen up against Israel as a, to bring judgment against Israel because of their sins. And God raised up a, a judge, and that judge was Samson because he heard the cries of his people against the Philistines. Um, chapter 16, Samson went to Gaza. There he saw an harlot and went in unto her. So Samson, Samson loved the, he loved the harlots now. He loved, he loved, he loved the, the, the ladies, uh, and uh, particularly the, the ladies uh, of, uh, the, the ladies who walk by night, you know. And it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson has come hither. And they compassed him in and laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city and were quiet all the night, saying, In the morning, when it is day, we shall kill him. And so Samson lay till midnight and arose at midnight, and he took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts. He tore off the doors of the gate, ladies and gentlemen, and the two posts and went away from them, bar of the gates and all, and put them on his shoulders and carried them up to the top of the hill that is before Hebron. Okay, so they, they couldn't, they couldn't uh, capture him, subdue him, when he went into this harlot. Okay, uh, verse 4 of chapter 16, this is where Samson uh, falls in love with a woman whose name was Delilah. And it was Delilah who uh, brought forth Samson's downfall. And um, I say to the men in the audience, men, um, be careful. Um, if you're married, be faithful to your wife. Be faithful. Don't fall into adultery. Uh, uh, don't fall into uh, and, uh, and these, these, don't give into these enticing spirits. Be faithful to your wife. I say to you young men uh, who are not uh, married, um, trust God to give you a godly wife, and when God gives you a godly woman, you stick with her and stay with her and be faithful to her. Uh, so many men have been brought down by an unfaithful woman, and, and, and God is not going to honor. He will not honor uh, fornication. God will not honor adultery. And so, uh, to make a long story short, Samson uh, uh, is, is captivated by Delilah, but he plays games. He plays games with her. Ladies and gentlemen, if you play with fire, you're going to get burnt. We've heard this from the time we were children. Play with fire, you're going to get burnt. And so he kept playing games with Delilah. She kept trying to find out the secret of his strength. The, the leaders of the community uh, promised her 1,100 uh, pieces of silver apiece from each one if she would find out the secret of his, his, his strength. 
and why he was so strong. They heard about how he tore the doors off the gates of, of one city. He, they heard about he, how he slew a thousand men with the jawbone of an ass, and they knew of his strength and, and, and great strength and prowess, and so they wanted to find out how to subdue him because he was, uh, he was bringing hurt upon the Philistine people. And Delilah, she worked her game. I say, ladies and gentlemen, she worked her game, or, or as we would say when, she, when I lived in Chester, Pennsylvania, she worked it. She worked it her game. <laughs> she worked her game. I mean, she worked and 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 and, and uh, enticed Samson and deceived him, and he kept going back. Ladies and gentlemen, if you play with fire, you're gonna get burnt. Okay. And so Samson told her, well, this is how, um, why I'm strong. If you do this, uh, uh, then uh, I'll be rendered powerless. And she did that and called the men of the, um, uh, who were hiding uh, in, 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 in the vicinity. And it didn't work. And Samson deceived her and laughed at her. And then she tried again. And Samson told her another way. Uh, this is the secret to my strength. If you uh, uh, pin my hair, uh, this and and so they pinned his hair to a bar, and that didn't work. And, and uh, then uh, he finally told her, "Well, I was born to be a Nazarite, and no razor has ever touched my head. And if a razor touches my head, then I'm rendered weak." And so. Uh, she used all, all her charm and 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 got him uh, drunk, and well, he wasn't supposed to be drinking anyway. He wasn't supposed he wasn't even even supposed to be uh, hanging out with whores and and prostitutes and women. <clears throat> he was supposed to be pure unto God. And um, he fell asleep, and she called for uh, the the barbers, and they cut his hair, and 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 and. Um, then she called the men who were hiding, and they realized they had him now. We got him now. He, we got him now. He's no longer strong. He's weak. And so they put him in prison. They gouged his eyes out and made him blind, and he was in prison. And then on one festive occasion, they decided to have fun with Samson. And so they called uh, Samson to make sport of him at a festive occasion, which they had Thousands of people assembled in a building, even <clears throat> on the roof of the building. And, and in the meantime, they forgot. to They allowed Samson's hair to grow. And so here's Samson blind, but he calls on the, 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 the young boy who was leading him and said, Here, help me to place my hands uh, um, between the pillars, around the pillars of the building. And Samson um, had the young boy lead him to the pillars of the building, and the strength of the building rested on those pillars. And then Samson, ladies and gentlemen, you must uh, admire this. He repented. He repented. He called on the Lord, and he repented. And um, verse 28 of chapter 16, And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. Now, I take that as his repentance, and, and he returned to the Lord. And, um, and Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood, and on which it was borne up of the one on his right hand and of the one on his left. How do I know he repented? Because you look at the results. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell upon the Lord's. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson again. And he pulled those pillars down, and the house fell, and thousands of people died in that event. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Then his brethren and all the house of his father came down and took him and brought him up 
and buried him between Zorah and Eshtael in the burying place of Manoah, his father. And he judged Israel 20 years. So that's uh, Samuel. Now, now, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, as I was, as I was reading script, scripture, and sometimes you've got to read scripture and it will make you laugh. Okay, when, when I'm going to read that last verse again, 30, 31, verse 31 of chapter 16. Then his brethren and all the house of his father came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Eshtel in the burying place of Manoah, his father. Now that's sad. You don't need to laugh there, but you can laugh here. And he judged Israel 20 years. So you've got to laugh at the syntax. You've got to laugh at the construction of the sentence, and that's the way the interpreters interpret it from the original manuscripts. It was not intended that it be read this way um, to assume that after he died, he judged Israel for 20 years. No, no. It was that uh, they're saying he judged Israel 20 years uh, before he died. But if you read it the way it is in chapter 31, Samson died, and then after he died, he judged Israel for 20 years. Anyway, moving right along. Pastor Carter, you sound particular. Well, moving right along, chapter 17, mm -hmm. uh, there was a man of Mount Ephraim whose name was Micah, and he said unto his mother, now here's, here's something, uh, the 1,100 shekels, shekels of silver that were taken from thee, about which thou cursest, and spake us of, of, also, of also in mine ears, behold, the silver is with me. I took it. And his mother said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my son. So this man stole 1,100 pieces of silver from his mom. Okay? I mean, uh, he was corrupt. He stole from his mother. And so she didn't know who stole it. So she cursed whoever stole it. So a curse was on the one who stole it. And uh, uh, he was under the heavy weight of the curse, and he went and confessed to his mom, uh, I stole the money. And she took the curse off, off him, and at the end of chapter, verse 2, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my son. And when he had restored the 1,100 shekels of silver to his mother, his mother said, I had wholly dedicated the silver unto the Lord from my hand for my son to make a graven image and a molten image. Now, therefore, I will restore it unto thee. And so she was saving that money so that her son could make a graven image and a molten image, which, ladies and gentlemen, was contrary to the word of God. Okay? And um, uh, the, the, we, we find in Exodus chapter 20, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make any graven images. And she was saving that money to, for her son to make an idol. Yet he restored the money to his mother, and his mother took 200 shekels of silver and gave him them to the founder, to the founder, meaning the, the, the one who operated the foundry, the silversmith, the one who made idols, and uh, who made thereof a graven image and a molten image, and they were in the house of Micah. So they took that money, gave it to the founder, and the founder made the, um, um, the, the idol maker. He made the idol. And the man Micah had a house of gods and made an ephod and teraphim and consecrated one of his sons who became his priest. So this man Micah consecrated one of his sons to be a priest. Ladies and gentlemen, verse 6 says, In those days there was no king in Israel. But every man did that which was right in his own sight. And so they even consecrated their own priests. They made their own idols. And they worshipped those idols. They were corrupt, ladies and gentlemen. These are God's people who were corrupt. They forgot the law of God. And every man did that which was right in his own sight. Verse 7 of chapter 17. And there was a young man out of Bethlehem, Judah, of the tri a family of Judah who was a Levite, and he sojourned there. Now, the Levites were the ones who were to be uh, ministering unto God at the tabernacle. Okay, the tabernacle was still there at Shiloh, and, and 
And, and this Levite was supposed to be one ministering unto the Lord at the tabernacle. Verse 8, And the man departed out of the city from Bethlehem, Judah, to sojourn where he could find a place. And he came to Mount Ephraim to the house of Micah as he journeyed. So this Levite, who uh, 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 was a backslider from what the Levites were supposed to be doing, he was sojourning, trying to find him a job. Ladies and gentlemen, he was trying to find him a job, trying to find him, get him some income. Ladies and gentlemen, he was trying to get him a place to live. Verse 9, And Micah said unto him, Micah is the one who ordained uh, his own priest and had that ephod made and uh, had that uh, idol made. And Micah said unto him, Whence comest thou? And he said unto him, I am a Levite of Bethlehem, Judah, and I go to sojourn where I may find a place. In other words, he's telling me, hey, look, I'm, I'm a priest. What he's saying, ladies and gentlemen, is what a lot of preachers are saying today. I'm a preacher for hire. I'm a preacher for hire. Uh, I, I just saw on Facebook yesterday uh, a young lady, and I know her very well, out of Chester, Pennsylvania, Dr. Jean. Out of Chester, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. she put on Facebook, I'm a worship leader. I'll come and and and. and and train your worship leaders. I'll wor lead your worship, uh, and you can make an appointment with me here. And I, my my book is open. Book me to be your worship leader. She's hmm. looking to make some. She's looking to make some money. And ladies and gentlemen, you've got choirs for hire. You've got musicians for hire. You've got uh, bands for hire. You've got uh, uh, praise dancers for hire. Uh, you've got preachers for hire. You've got bishops for hire. You've got so many people in the so-called body of Christ. They're up for a hire. You can you can hire hire you can you can hire some of these charlatans, some of these uh, uh, sway back uh, backslidden uh, corrupt uh, men and women. So they call themselves women of God, but they've got a price. You pay the price, you get them. And they're all over the place, ladies and gentlemen. And so this is nothing new. This man Micah said unto the man who was looking for a place, dwell with me. Verse 10 of chapter 17, he said, dwell with me and be unto me a father and a priest. And I will give thee ten shekels of silver by the year and a suit of apparel and thy victuals. So the Levite went in. Ladies and gentlemen, this was a preacher for hire, a priest for hire. We got them today. We got them. They're all over America. And, hey, Elijah, you guys got them in, in Kenya because we've seen them. You call them briefcase preachers. Uh, they try to hit on people, uh, putting a bag on people. They, and, and, and they will go. He even have, uh, it grieved my heart the last time I went to Kenya. You got praise teams, praise dancers, d trying to duplicate, imitate what they see in America. They have put on a good show for money for that offering. They have put on a good show. They will sing their praise, their dance, but they want that money, ladies and gentlemen. And it's sickening. It sickens your soul, your spirit. Micah said unto him, "Dwell with me, and be unto me a father and a priest, and I will give thee." Ten shekels of silver by the year. In other words, I'm going to put you on salary. You be my priest. You be a father to me, a priest, and I'll pay, pay you ten pieces of silver every year, and I'll give you a new suit of clothing every, any year, every year, and I'll give you a place to stay and your victuals. So the Levite went in. He entered into a contract with Micah. And ladies and gentlemen, we got a lot of, I call them punks in the pulpit. Got a whole lot of them entering into contracts with people. And, 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 and uh, 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 some of them have no guts, no, no, no spiritual backbone, no guts, don't know the word of God. Many of them are leading congregations, uh, and, and I call them punks in the pulpit. They will, they will go through the, the form of worship for a price, and preachers. And, and, and ladies and gentlemen, and I look, I look at some of these so-called evangelicals uh, in America, the evangelicals uh, uh, in America. You know, all these folks saying, make America great again. Many of them, many of them, they know the word of God is saying one thing, but yet they support 
politicians who do the opposite, and they call themselves men and women of God, punks in the pulpit. Yes, they are, and if you're one, you're a punk in the pulpit. And, 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 and have, they've gotten mm -hmm. so far away from the Word of God. Some of them are scared to preach the Word of God. Some of them are afraid to take a stand for righteousness and for holiness. And so they go with whatever way the political winds are blowing because they want those comforts and those perks. But God is going to move. The Spirit of God is going to move. America is going to come in the, under judgment, and other nations are going to come under judgment because God is not a man that, that he should lie. He's not deceived, and he cannot be mocked. So I, 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 I urge you, be careful who you follow. Be careful who you sit under. Be careful, be careful uh, who, you, who you attach yourself to. Ladies and gentlemen, I know everybody wants to be politically correct, and uh, uh, I'm a Republican, I'm a Democrat, I'm an independent, but ladies and gentlemen, I urge you to be born again and get filled with the Holy Ghost and let the Holy Spirit guide you because when the Holy Spirit guides you, he will open your eyes and see how corrupt the Republicans are. He will open your eyes and see how corrupt the Democrats are. He will open your eyes and see how corrupt your local politicians are. He will open your eyes and that you'll see how corrupt some of these senators and, and, and representatives and, and even the president is. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that uh, might make some of you mad, but so what? So what? It's the truth anyhow. Praise God. I would rather take a stand and preach the word of God and share the word of God than to encourage you to be bought like this Levite was bought. He was bought. He was going around looking for a place where he can get a, a, a comfortable income, a place to live, food to eat, clothing to wear. And there are people, ladies and gentlemen, and you all know them and I know them, they would do anything that a board of deacons will say. They would do anything that the board of, 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 of trustees or, or steward board will say. They would do anything that the bishop will say as long as they got that position. I call them punks in the pulpit, Gene Bratton, and, and you've heard me say that over and over again, and I'll uh -huh. keep on saying it. I will keep on saying it. Okay. Um, and the Levite was content to dwell with the man, and the young man was unto him as one of his sons. And Micah consecrated the Levite, and the young man became his priest and was in the house of Micah. Then said Micah, now know that I... Now know I that the Lord will do me good, seeing I have a Levite to my priest. Micah said, I, I know God's going to bless me now because I got mm. a Levite for my priest. Sound like somebody I know in a, mm. a high leadership mm -hmm. position in America. I know God's going to do me good. I got Paula White as my priest. I know mm, God's mm. going to do me good. I got uh, Robert uh -huh. Jeffers as my priest. I know that God's going to do me right. I got Ken Copeland as my priest. I know God's going to do me right. I got John Hagee as my priest. Ladies and gentlemen, be careful. I know God's going to do me right. I got T.D. Jakes as my priest. You better mm. be careful, ladies and gentlemen. You better be careful who you have as your priest. My priest is Jesus Christ. He's my Amen. high priest. He cannot be, uh, the Bible says he cannot be touched by the feeling of, that he can be touched by the feeling of my infirmities. He was in, in all points tempted just as I am, yet without sin. Make Jesus your high priest. Come on now. Yes. Judgment's coming, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I can't stay here. There are three more chapters, four more chapters. Chapter 18 there was no king in Israel, and in those days the tribe of the Danites sought them an inheritance to dwell in, for unto that day all their inheritance had fallen unto them among the tribes of Israel. So we see Micah, Micah has his priests, and, and they were by the house of Micah, verse 3, they knew the voice of the young man, the Levite, and they turned in thither and said unto him, 
Who brought thee hither? And what makest thou in this place? And what hast thou here? And he said unto them, Thus and thus dealeth Micah with me, and hath hired me, and I am his priest. And they said unto him, Ask counsel, we pray thee of God, that we know, may know whether our way which we go shall be prosperous. And the priest said unto them, Go in peace. Before the Lord is your way, wherein ye go. Ladies and gentlemen, all these priests who are saying go this way are not teaching you the way of the Lord. Okay? And it just turned out that uh, this, was, this turned out to be uh, a disaster. It turned out to be a great disaster. Okay? Because they chose the wrong priest. Verse 22, and when they were a good way from the house of Micah, the men that were in the houses, houses near to Micah's house were gathered together and overtook the children of Dan. And they cried unto the children of Dan, and they turned their faces and said unto Micah, What aileth thee that thou comest with such a company? And he said, Ye have taken away my gods which I made, and the priests, and ye are gone away. And what have I more? And what is this that ye say unto me? What aileth thee? And the children of Dan said unto him, let not thy voice be heard among us, lest angry fellows run upon thee, etc. And the children of Dan went their way, and when Micah saw that they were too strong for him, he turned and went back unto his house. And they took the things which Micah had made, and the priests which, which he had, and came unto Laish, unto a people that were at quiet and secure, and they smote them with the edge of the sword, and burnt the city with fire. And there was no deliverer because it was far from Zidon. And they called the name of the city Dan, after the name of Dan their father, verse 29. And the children of Dan set up the graven image, and Jonathan, the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, he and his sons were priests to the tribe of Dan until the day of the captivity. And they set them up Micah's graven image, which he made all the time that the house of God was in Shiloh. Ladies and gentlemen, that one hired priest, that ephod, that uh, graven image that they made, caused the tribe of Dan to be so corrupt and caused such a, a division uh, in, in, in the, among the tribes of Israel. And God had to deal with them. God had to deal with them. Verse 9, chapter 19, And it came to pass in those days there was no king in Israel, that there was a certain Levite sojourning on the side of Mount Ephraim, which took to him a concubine out of Bethlehem, Judah. Now, this is, we're still up in, in Dan, up in that area. Dan and Ephraim, Dan and his concubine, by and played the whore against him and went away from him unto her father's house in Bethlehem, Judah. And so he eventually went to her father's house, and they sat down, verse 6, and did eat and drink both of them together. For the damsel's father said unto the man, Be content, I pray thee, and tarry all night. So he kept them there for a few days, and um, then the man uh, went off with his concubine. He took her and went back, heading back to where they belong, where they were supposed to be. And uh, behold, verse 16, chapter 19, there came an old man from his work out of the field at even, which also was, was also of Mount Ephraim, and he sojourned in Gibeah. But the men of the place were Benjamites. And when he had lifted up his eyes, he saw a wayfaring man in the street of the city. And the old man said, Whither goest thou, and whence comest thou? Well, to make a long story short, um, they, they uh, ran into a corrupt situation, and the uh, man and his concubine um, stayed in the city where they were not supposed to stay, and um, the men of the city wanted to uh, have carnal knowledge of the, the man, not the woman. They were sodomites. They were sodomites, as wicked as in, in Sodom and Gomorrah. They wanted to uh, have sex with the man. And then the, the house in which they were staying, the owner of the house said, no, uh, uh, take the man's concubine and take my daughter and do with them as you please. And, and this so-called uh, man of God, this so-called man of God, this priest who had this concubine, he shouldn't have had a concubine from, in the first place, 
Uh, Amen. He went along with them and, and, and let the men of the city, instead of, you know, going out and sacrificing himself, because actually the men of the city wanted him. They wanted to have sex with him. They were sodomites, ladies and gentlemen, sodomites. God hates sodomy. God hates sodomy. Hey, look, you, you, you might be listening to this, and you might, might be a man married to a man, and the law says you can do this. A man can be married to a man. You might, be, you might even be Pete, Pete Buttigieg, Pete Buttigieg running for the president of the United States, and you're married to a man, and the law says uh, it's all right, and, and, and people who are following you, they're sending you millions of dollars for you to run for the presidency, but sodomy is a sin against God, and God hates it. Even though the, the government endorses it, you may be doing this, and you think you're getting over, ladies and gentlemen, the deal's going to go down, and God is not pleased. God hates sodomy. He doesn't hate people. He hates sodomy. I'm fired up, ladies and gentlemen. I'm fired up. I'm fired up. I'm fired up. All right. Many Amen. Americans, many Americans want to see a a man in the in the office who's married to a man. He commits sodomy with his so-called wife, ladies and gentlemen. That's sodomy. Yeah. It's a sin. It's a sin. And so uh, here, here's this 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 <clears throat> punk. And, and that's a good word for him, true, true, true. And this, this punk uh, sends his concubine out. I mean, he used that one. He used that concubine. concubine. He should never have been that, in that relationship <coughs> with her anyway. She had, should never have been with him. But people get caught up in relationships, and, and he pimped her, and, and he uh, 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 threw her out to the crowd to save his, excuse the expression, Save his own behind. Ha ha. And, 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 and he threw the concubine. Uh, Gene Bratton, I know you're laughing. I know you're laughing. He, <laughs> he, 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 he threw her out to the crowd to save his own butt. And, and, uh, and the crowd, I mean, they ravished that woman. They, those men yeah. uh, ravished that woman. And just, uh, uh, I mean, just uh, they had sex with her all night long until she wound up crawling back to the man's house. And she was dead. And the next morning, when this 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 no count low life priest who brought the concubine there, when uh, uh, when he found it was safe for him to leave, he opened the door and this concubine's laying there dead at the doorstep of the house where he spent the night. Where where he threw her out there for the crowd to ravish, and they ravished her till she died. And so what he did, he took her body and took her with him. And then, and then to make matters worse, ladies and gentlemen, to make matters worse, he's the one that perpetrated the whole thing. He cut her body up into 12 pieces. Yep. He cut the body up into 12 pieces and sent a piece of the body to each of the tribes of Israel to remind them. Remind me so much of these evangelicals, so-called evangelicals who will support lies and support lies and, and promote lies all over the nation, who don't have the backbone to say, hey, hey, this man is corrupt. This man ought to repent. This man has no right to lead anybody. This man is so contrary to the word of God. I wish the evangelicals would read the word of God and preach the word of God. And so he cut this woman's up, this concubine's body up into 12 pieces and sent the 12 pieces to the 12 tribes of Israel to remind them. Listen to this. Listen to this. This is, I, I said evangelicals because many evangelicals are pimping the word of God for their own uh, purposes and their own political purposes. Well, this yes. man cut this woman's body up into 12 pieces, sent her body in 12 directions to remind the tribes of Israel of what God's word says and that God's word uh, says that sodomy was a crime. Okay? So, now, he didn't say anything about having a concubine was a crime. 
That's but right. He brought to he brought to the attention of the nation, the twelve tribes of Israel, that the tribe of Dan had committed sodomy, and they were sodomites, and they killed this woman, and that Israel had the responsibility to rise up and destroy the tribe of Dan because of their sodomic sodomite behavior and ladies and gentlemen what you have what you have uh, uh, Israel rising up against Gibeah and Israel going to war against one of their own tribes I said Dan let me correct that make sure I'm correct the Benjamites the tribe of Benjamin the yes. tribe of Benjamin. I'm sorry. It's not the tribe of Dan. The tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin. And so they mm -hmm. were each each tribe received a portion of that woman's body, and that uh, piece of uh, body part was to rouse them up to anger against the Benjamites, and they sent an army to destroy Benjamin. And they almost wiped out the tribe of Benjamin, ladies. Yep. First of all, Israel got defeated. Then uh, the Benjamites were defeated. They almost wiped out the tribe of Benjamin. And they had several hundred Benjamite men left. And these men were without wives. And so after, the war, after they practically slaughtered the tribe of Benjamin, then they had to figure out how to get wives for the Benjamites. And they wound up encouraging the Benjamite men to steal wives, steal virgins from uh, the, the, the portion of one tribe that didn't send an army to fight against Benjamin. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible exposes a whole lot of corruption. And, and, yes. and, and, and a lot of this corruption we're seeing today, and, 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 and even to the point where people uh, use the word of God. And, and 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 go through so-called religious and 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 spiritual uh, uh, activities to 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 get people to move on their behalf. This is nothing new, ladies and gentlemen. This is nothing new. And so we need to wake up in this nation, and preachers need to get back to preaching the gospel. A lot of these pastors need to get off their high horses to humble themselves and proclaim the word of God. And, and ladies and gentlemen, I was walking in the, on the trail today, and the Lord said, people need to stop saying, make America great again. But they need to repent and make America great. America has never been great. America has always been corrupt. And America's always, uh, 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 American preachers often have often used the word of God to subdue people. Build a wall. Keep the Mexicans out. Build a wall. Uh, send, 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 send the uh, blacks back to Africa. Don't let any uh, Haitians in. Build a wall. And they find scripture to support what they're doing. It's, it's a shame. The, the judgment's going to come, ladies and gentlemen. Judgment is going to come. And even through, through this, I know I get fired up because there's, there's an intensity inside of me, but yet I'm to walk in love and, 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 and preach the word of God, which I intend to do. And I pray you would do it. But uh, in doing so, a lot of people are not going to like us. They're going to hate your guts. But I'd rather have people hate my guts knowing that I am standing on the word of God and doing what thus saith the Lord and proclaiming the word of God. And I pray that you will do the same. The apostle Paul had to do that. Uh, the, the apostles, the disciples had to do that. They had to stand against a corrupt Roman government. That, 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 that had corrupt Jewish officials in their pockets. Sounds like America. A corrupt government that had corrupt uh, religious leaders in their pockets, 
and Paul had to go against that. Jesus had Jesus had to go against that 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 uh, political situation. Paul had to contend with it. Uh, 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 James and John, Peter had to contend with it. And so, uh, what is it about America that makes men of so-called men of God scared to preach the word of God? As I asked a, a very, very popular preacher in this nation last year, hey, Pastor so-and-so, how come white men don't preach against racism? He said, they ain't going to do so, Pastor Carter. I said, what are you going to do? Duh, quiet. I'm still waiting on an answer. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got to stand on the word of God. We've got to walk in love. I didn't get to the book of Ruth. I never did get to the book of Ruth, but Ruth's, Ruth's situation, and you can read it for yourself, chapter 1, Naomi's plight, God, thy God will be my God, Ruth's declaration, chapter 2, Ruth's faithfulness, the kindness of Boaz, Naomi had a plan, sleep at his feet, don't sleep with him, sleep at his feet, uncover his feet. And that's the indication that uh, he has a responsibility to perform the right of leveret marriage, that you're available, and he's the next of kin, and he has the responsibility of being the kinsman redeemer if you uncover his feet and lay at his feet. And if he spreads his blanket over you, that means he's going to do his responsibility, and he's going to purchase you, he's going to marry you, and, 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 and raise up children in the name of your deceased husband. Ruth is a, a, a book of great faith in God. And the book of Ruth takes place during the period of the judges. So there are some good things happening during the time of the judges. Everybody was not corrupt. But well, we see God moving mightily on the behalf of his people. And ladies and gentlemen, um, don't be discouraged about the picture that I've painted about America. You, you know the situation in this country. You see it. But look beyond the dark clouds. Look at Jesus. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Look at God's plans. Because after the storm clouds pass, there's a bright, sunny day ahead as we as we look forward to worshiping and crowning our King of Kings and Lord of Lords forever, walk together, children. Don't you get weary. I say walk together, children. Don't you get weary. Don't compromise the gospel. Don't compromise your values and your principles. No, not for money, not for some pieces of silver or gold, not for a job. Not for a place to stay, not for an annual uh, 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 clothing excursion. No, be faithful unto God. Don't let anyone buy you from Jesus. Don't let there be a price. I've heard people say, every man has a price. No, that's Satan, the Lord rebuke you. No, no, Jesus bought us with a price. Let's honor him in the way we walk, in the way we talk in the way we uh, conduct ourselves. And let us shun evil and flee from idolatry. And, 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 and let us not give in, yield to this corrupt political system. This past Leroy Carter uh, has been so good uh, to share this tonight. I know I call some eyebrows to be raised tonight. I know hair is uh, standing up on some of your backsides, but that's all right. That's all right. You go to God about this. You go to God about this and check the word of God and see if what I preach today, what I've taught tonight is of the word of God. And then <laughs> you deal with God. And I'll see you next week. Hopefully I'll see you next week. Praise God. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We bless you. We honor you. Lord, bless your people. Help us to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as we know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Bless all the people, God. Help them to continue to study your word 
in Jesus' name, amen. Well, next week amen. we're looking at First uh, Samuel chapters 1 through 15, so read your assignments ahead of time. We're going to stop the recording.